The Dalles is a beautiful town in the Columbia Gorge, full of great people. But it's not immune to the problems of drug abuse and homelessness. Recently, our Blair Best tagged along with an outreach worker to get a look up close at the challenges of trying to help that population. It's not easy, even with the help of some money from Measure 110. The ready to roll? Well, we're off to uh, Bread and Blessings. Um, Bread and Blessings is uh, where they hand out food for the houseless people. It's the first stop of the day for the Dallas outreach worker, Martine Rivas. I am an engagement specialist from Bridges to Change. Bridges to Change, the nonprofit where Martine works, connecting homeless people and those leaving prison with recovery services and housing. And I'm here to help, man. I'm here to provide services for you. Louis has been homeless in the Dalles for several months. He tells Martine he wants to go into detox. If you're interested in treatment, man, I can definitely get you to, uh, to uh, a detox. Recently, Bridges to Change expanded their outreach work to help people like Louis, all thanks to funding from Measure 110. That's the controversial law passed by voters back in 2020, which decriminalizes user amounts of street drugs and sends tax money to programs like Bridges to Change. I think this is just the tip of the iceberg of what we're trying to do. Uh, in, this, in this state. While many argue the law has made the state's drug epidemic worse, Victor Velos, the regional manager for Bridges to Change, believes there's a greater problem. We need a faster process of getting people to treatment when they're ready to go. It's just you got to get them on the right time. You know, if he's feeling right now that he needs to go, he doesn't want to be here and he's ready to, for treatment, then I, I'm right here. Martine knows firsthand how quickly one has to act when going into detox. I've been clean now for over five years, but I lived the life of an addict. That life sent him to prison for three years. When I came out of um, prison, I came straight into housing of bridges to change. So I did the whole 360. I went all the way around and I'm just so proud of myself, you know, and it just, it works. Take a seat. That message he tries to pass on to others. Hey, thank you for your help. Yeah, okay. no problem, man. So the plan is to go to the office. Um, I am going to call uh, Eastern Oregon uh, Detox Center, and then we're going to get an over-the-phone interview. You know, just hoping for better things, you know. On our drive back to the nonprofit, we learn the closest detox center is two hours away. And I have a participant here that is willing to go to treatment and uh, to detox, and he's, he feels like he's ready today. It turns out Louis says he only uses THC, which doesn't qualify him for a bed. In order for you to get help, you need to be on fentanyl, heroin, and all those tough drugs, you know? And so it just, it's not fair. Martine tells us of another homeless man with a similar story. He started using meth just to get a bed. He's like, I don't really do meth no more, but I guess that's why he came back. And he said, you know what? If that's what it takes, I'm dirty. Please choose from the following. Two hours. Hi, Kathy. This is Martine Rivas um, from Bridges to Change. So I'm just trying to see if what can you do for us. And numerous phone calls later. Please wait a moment. Martine eventually connected with a counselor who once helped him. She was able to refer Louis to a housing program. Referrals are a crucial step in the process, one Martine isn't qualified to do. And so she's going to make this a priority. So she's actually going to be able to see him on Tuesday and give him an assessment there. If not for that connection, finding a place for Louis could have taken weeks, even months. I feel like we've hit rock bottom and there's nothing left to do. If we don't get out, we're going to die. We meet Rachel at the local food pantry after dropping off Louis. She feels like a prisoner to addiction and wants to detox, yet knows how difficult it is to find a bed. That issue was highlighted in a state audit just released on Measure 110. It points out that the benefits of investing in treatment programs outweigh the cost of those programs, since it's proven people continue using drugs if they're not able to get a bed. And according to a 2022 state-funded study, more than half of the substance use recovery and treatment organizations in the state say their capacity does not meet the current demand. They don't really have anything here for help when it comes to drugs or alcohol. It's now 3 o'clock. 
Martine's shift is almost over, so he gives Rachel a number to call. We don't know if she called it or what ended up happening to her. The system is meant for you to fail. Yet he keeps fighting to win. I'm just prepared to help the next person. So as soon as I'm done with helping one person, I'm ready to go out there and help the next person. You know, just to let them know that there is a change. Um, there's something better out there. So Blair and I are here together so she can give us a little bit more insight on what it was like reporting on that story. And I know that you found a lot of frustrations out there. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, those outreach workers have a lot of patience, I can tell you that. Just the hours of phone calls and running into roadblocks, you know, one right after another, and then say they have to make a phone call the next day or follow up with the person who's, you know, living on the street and then they can't find them for whatever reason. Um, for me, it was frustrating just watching for a day. I can't imagine, you know, doing that over and over again with the system set up the way it is. It is great to see on the ground that some of this 110 money is being used for outreach and that yeah. outreach really is happening even in small towns like the Dells. Yeah, but I think what this story shows is yes, the outreach is happening, but it only goes so far. Right. So, you know, there's two outreach workers as part of that nonprofit. They go out, they meet people, they make relationships, but it kind of stops there sometimes. It takes a long time for them to actually get them into housing or into detox. And it's not as efficient as you no. would think it should be. No, yeah. because I learned there's so many different levels. They need a counselor to sort of sign off on someone going into treatment. It's not as easy as, oh, I work for this nonprofit. I met this person who needs help. Can we get him in? It's, it takes like 10 other steps. And it's where's the paperwork yes. and you got to sign this. We have this to do an interview. That. We have to do an assessment. It's yeah. Well, it's a good look at why things are not as simple as we would like them to be. Yeah, 100%. Pick people off the street and get them into rehab. Well, it's not that it's simple. <laughs> definitely not, yeah. And some of the people doing this work are just learning it themselves. I mean, the, the guy we profiled, he's been doing it for a month. So he's still learning himself. Yeah, yeah, but he can relate to the people that are out on the street. Very much so. He has something that, say, you and I don't have. He's lived through it. He's you know, been to prison, been addicted, and now trying to make a difference. So he can already, you know, jump ahead with those relationships. Well, good for him for being out there and fighting the fight, even mm -hmm. through the bureaucracy. Yeah, 100%. It was really inspiring to see, and I wish them all the best. Yeah, I'm glad you brought us that story. Thank you. Thanks.